ビームキャストでシーバー新たな恐怖が始まったバイオハザードコードフェロニカ One of the surviving members of RPG's famous stars teams ドリームキャストで実現した新しいバイオハザードの世界そのリアルさ演出息を飲む臨場感そして今日バイオ2の事件より3ヶ月後ヒロインクレアを中心に物語は新展開を迎える絶海の孤島に捕らえられゾンビの群れに囲まれ果たして生き残るチャンスは全てが進化した次世代バイオハザード君の心臓はついてくれるかはいメシー Rachel Schaefer back at you with another part in this Dreamcast build. Now, this is where we got to last week. This week, we're putting in the GD EMU and also hopefully finishing up this console. So, hope you've been enjoying the ASMR nature of the beast. And we have stands, by the way, for these. Don't know if we're really going to need them, but. We got them anyway. And this is the new GDEMU. It's the version 520. And this is for. This is the one with. This is a clone, yes, but this is has the latest firmware on it. So Resident Evil is fixed as well as Skies of Arcadia. And obviously, it's a good thing the Resident Evil is fixed. Because if we didn't, we'd be in big trouble. So I want to do a test fit. With this first, make sure it fits. It should. It should snap right in here, which is fine. I wonder what these standoffs are for because I don't know if it's for the. Because it definitely needs a stand of some kind. Does it go in here? So I never encountered that before with it. Okay, so there's an installation guide that comes in. Oh, so it installs to the. All right, that. There's two fixing screws. Yeah, we noticed that. Where's the third step? Align the slot gently. So what are these for then? Unless they're too aligned? I don't know. So it's always good to do a dry fit. Yeah, because these are a little flimsy and that would definitely not fit in that hole. So I don't know what those, the hell those are for. But we'll figure it out. Is this the first time? I'm used to using Laser Bear's version of that. But I guess somebody cloned him. There's quite a few screws here. So, it says mounting screws, right? So, how the hell do you know which ones are the mounting screws? Two fixing screws. So, where does it come with all of those? Makes no sense to me. Unless one is to mount it to the board. Uh, we'll figure it out. We always do. Obviously, you want to put the SD extender in. That's the main thing you want to do. Now, it says to put some aligning screws on here. Which would be here and here. So, we should do that, shouldn't we? So I guess the goal was for this to be one full piece and then you slot her in. I mean, if it's going to work for our purposes, you know, hey.
It's gonna work for our purposes in hand. Second mounting screw is in. So according to the directions, this is how you're supposed to have it. And there's there's a screw here and here. Let's try to pop her in as we normally would a disk drive. Okay, so there looks to be one mount where you can put it there. Okay, so I'm assuming I gotta move my foot because my ankle is getting my ankle's getting messed up. So by the way, I have to put this power button in. I forgot about that. But it's good to do a dry fit anyway. So here's a oh shit. <laughs> oh. But anyway, there was a piece there. But here's the thing. How would you put it in there? Because it's flimsy. There's no real way to mount it. Unless the key is to break it. But why wouldn't they just have a part to break it in? I don't know. We'll figure it out. So anyway, because we're doing this sort of in real time. So I want to take out the two mounting screws real quick. Because we were just following the instructions. The instructions didn't mention you had to put the button in first. Should have been a no-brainer, but you know, you gotta go by what the instructions tell you. Which is a problem people have these days. They don't follow instructions. And they wonder why the thing gets messed up. Right, so let's click. I'm trying to get her in here to at least have a mounting point for where I can. I would think it would have had more concise instructions, but. For a clone, what do you expect? <clears throat> I know some people are like, oh, why don't you just get a legitimate one? Or... Because first of all, this is what a lot of other people are going to be using if they haven't used it already. Right, so now all of a sudden this isn't mounted correctly. And I know I can get the screw in if I really needed to. But I'm trying not to force it in. And secondly, why would I pay for a legitimate one when it's pretty much done? There's not really more you could do with this thing. I just want to make sure it's in. There's really no way to tell if you have her in. There we go. So I'm just going to screw here and then just forget about this piece because it's, it's attached right there. It's attached right there. It's attached right here, so... Should be all right. Oh, so that I guess in this what this long screw is for. So why did they include the plastic pieces? I don't fucking get that. Makes no sense. 
Makes a lot of sense now. Oh, shit. I'm going to do one of these screws first. Because this could present a problem. Because you don't want to bend the board. There we go. You don't want to bend the board. But at the same time, we want to keep this. So this should be fine, like it is, but I, it could present a problem when, you know, like stress on the board. So I'm happy with that, it's straight because this screw could present a problem down the line. So that's what I wanted to make sure. And of course, now all of a sudden we see that piece. Again, this is what having concise instructions is paramount. So we have a million parts None of which really match up with one another. Still looks a little down to me, but we'll find we'll be we'll find out. That's the purpose of this project, right? See if it works. All right. So now, and by the way, routing our cable should be easy enough to do now. I'm just gonna put this under the GDEMU. Because you want the fan to be able to work, right? So, all right. Now it's time to put the power supply back in. There is one part we can add right now, a very important part. You see, the pro this has a problem. Well, it has a few problems. Obviously, I told you about the controller board. That's going to get fixed in the future. Y'all know about the disk drive because we put a GDMU in here. But the, there's another third problem that people usually don't discuss, and that is with the power supply. Now, on these Dreamcast units, there is a 12 volt rail, which is primarily for the disk drive. But since the GDMU and the mode use a lot less power, that 12 volt is still being pumped through the system. and. What happens is you'll smell that electrical smell, that smoky smell coming out of your system, and it could cause an overload. So it won't happen right away, but it'll happen eventually. So you could take the 12 volt regulator out, but you could also keep this stuck because since the power supply is working and you could use it for another Dreamcast that actually does have a 12 volt rail that obviously is needed for the disk drive. So what do we do then? We need to obviously replace the power supply. Well, that's where this comes in from Handheld Legend. And it's a very small device. Now there is a couple different ones, granted. There is one that does USB, but we're not going for that yet. We're going with the more reliable one that we know of. And that is in this box. And what's in this box, if I can get it open, and I didn't think that I would need to open the box. That's why I didn't have my usual rubber on me. Oh, fuck it, I'll just rip it apart. Because not like we're going to do anything with the box afterwards. So... What's in this box is called the Retro PSU, or the Dream PSU. And what this is, is it's a power supply replacement for the Dreamcast. And yes, it is this small. It's this tiny. 
And what it does is it goes over your Dreamcast so you can actually change the power supply. And these, I believe, are for optional pins that aren't usually needed. So what we do is we just unopen our system. We're gonna pop this in, one screw seals it, and this connects to our Dreamcast power wire. And it comes with our, another reason why it's low on electric, you know, low on, I should say, heat, excuse me, it's, it's late, is because the power supply is external. That's why it has a little chunky boy here, so you won't be using a banana cord, an infinity cord no more. You'll be using one of these, and also one of these, because this is what plugs into here and this will go into the back of the Dreamcast and this is what you're gonna be plugging in from now on instead of the banana cord. And it doesn't need to be soldered in, that's already taken care of. You just plug and play and we're gonna show you how to do that right now. All right, so we're back at the Dreamcast and this is our setup as you've seen last week on the inside of the Dreamcast. Now, just wanna make sure that everything's on the up and up. So we're going to take out the power supply and again you want to be careful because even though this hasn't been turned on in a bit you still want to make sure you don't get shocked because you're still dealing with live stuff power supply stuff especially that coil you don't want to touch this or this especially you'll get a nice buzz all right it's great to have magnetized screws and of course that's obviously a problem with that one but not as much as a problem as this is and I'm just gonna shake out the screw because I don't want to risk touching it so <clears throat> I believe right over here is the main problem right in this spot there that's your 12 volt i believe i believe it's there i'm not sure it's been a while since i had someone remove it on an old another dreamcast i did but the 12 volt is what you need to remove so this way this doesn't overheat and you don't get that electric smell if you're running a device like this or the mode which is why this comes in so handy so now we're gonna go Grab it by the edges and gently lift her up. And by the way, don't forget about that little tab right there. So now the power supply is off and we're gonna replace it with this. So this goes in just like that. And you just need one screw to get this in. That's all you really need. And you can even take this plastic out if you want to. So this goes, so you gotta run the wire a different way now because the power wire instead goes over here. So you gotta make sure that you're on the up and up with that as well. I, I just, just tuck it under the GDMU. And now you need to take this wire that goes under here, click it and you have this adapter. Now the only thing that sucks is I wish they made a, made that, because it's a 3D print clearly. It's this way it could match the system, but I'm sure, and by the way, you don't screw it in, it just mounts just like the other one did. You can see on here, it's got like the side mounts there, same with this one. So uh, that's literally all you have to do is just one screw, Make sure it's plugged in, and that's pretty much it. And from here, these parts, say if you're running a mode, you can literally use these to plug in various things. So you got the 12 volt ground, 12 volt ground, five volt ground, and five volt ground, in case you need them. I don't believe we'll need them for this one. So now, we just close her up. And by the way, just gotta, since it's 3D printed, you gotta make sure that that goes in back there. 
screw her in and we're done. Now it's time to test it. And look at that wood you, Claire is done. And you can see we went with the red controller and red VMU. Doesn't quite match completely, but it's still a red controller and it's still a red system. So this is a little more of a deeper red than this one is, but we'll take it. This is more of a ruby. This is more of like a dark red, like a blood red. So now we got the power in and we got the SD card in for the GDM. Now this other part is a um, slot to store another SD card, say if you want to make a smaller one with the Atomus Wave games. So now it's time to fire up Claire and see her work. And this camera's being an ass, which is nothing new. And obviously because of the Dreamcast and the clock, we got to set it again. I'm just not going to worry about it. It's working. Fan is blowing out like it should. And here's our open menu SD card. And of course, you know, we got to play on here, right? We got to play some Resident Evil Code Veronica. So that's what we're going to do. One thing I've learned from the Saru is I'm just going to let the intro like that go because you never know. There could always be an issue. Because with certain games on the Saru that I've seen people talk about, they tell you not to skip the bias screen. One day we'll see if that actually is the case. So... But it's working so far. And by the way, this is the fan translation of Resident Evil Code Veronica X. And yes, Code Veronica X did get a Japanese release. Uh, it never got an American release, but it got a Japanese release. And what these people did was they took the screens and stuff from the PlayStation 2 version, which is another reason why it seems oh man i forgot how like powerful this jump pack is which is another reason why the videos may seem a little compressed load ace of non-x edition it's weird because this is code veronica x oh okay because I've never had to load a, a save before from this edition. So I forgot. They'll ask you at first if you want to load a non-Code Veronica X save. And then you just press no. And then you'll get your regular saves from Code Veronica X. Okay. That works, I guess. So if you buy, if you buy X and you already have a Code Veronica save, pick up where you left off. And as you can see... It's working just fine. It's really working. By the way, one more thing I want to show, just to prove that this latest iteration, this latest clone, if you will, of the GDEMU is fully working. And to do that, we're going to restart her up. Let's press start anyway, see what happens. Okay, it works. Cool. Because one of the other main complaints was Skies of Arcadia. That the opening cinematic was skipping or freezing up. So now, let's check to see if that's true. Let's see what it does. I already know the answer, but I'm sure that I still want to show you guys that it's actually working. By the way, I wish there was a way I could change my mem card icon. I mean, that'll work for now, but I'd rather have a mem card, memory card icon for Resident Evil because this is a Resident Evil system. Like if somebody can make if somebody can make this or if it's already made where you have Claire's jacket emblem as a memory card icon, I would take it. 
and by the way, really exciting time that 8-Bit Mods is apparently working on, finally working on, by the way, a Mem Card Pro for the Dreamcast. I cannot wait. It's gonna be fucking awesome. This is the opening cinematic, by the way. This is the one that a lot of people are like, yeah, it freezes, it doesn't work. Because on the clones, it wouldn't, and then, then again, it wasn't on the legitimate one either, but he updated it. And then for the longest time, the clones didn't update. But now the clones are fully up to date. So now your cinematic is going to work. Resident Evil Code Veronica is going to work. And honestly, at this point, I mean, yes, mode uses a hard drive. But it hasn't been updated in a long time. Not only that, but you have to tie it to a serial code, to a download code. With GDMU, it's oh, it's literally not really open source, but it's plug and play. Everything works. Yes, it's a downside to work the menu. Yes, it's a downside that you can't do folders, you know, with different regions like you could on mode. But if you're really only going to play a handful of games, like I am, like I only got a hundred and twenty gig card in here. So, for me, it makes no sense to have a whole big library when all I need is a little bit. Especially since for a lot of Dreamcast games, they're like completely blown up. Like a lot of the Dreamcast GDIs out there are literally just 1.5, I believe, in size. But a lot of those games are a lot smaller. So what you could do is use GDI Shrink and then put a certain line in the GDEMU INI so it doesn't freeze. And you're good to go. <coughs> I've had no problems. Um, I, I did a test drive of the unit before I changed the power supply. And just to make sure it was working. And I had no problems with it whatsoever. Except for the Atomus Wave stuff, which obviously I get. You know, that's a little complicated. But everything's working as normal. So honestly, especially if you're on a budget and you're trying to do something like this, the GDMU you can get with that injection molded piece that I showed you right here. You can get that for 80 something bucks. Mode is like 260 and on top of that, that's just for the board. That's not for the mount you're gonna need, which is another 30 that Laser Bear does. And by the way, use my code, Little Miss Kitten, 5% off Laser Bear if you're, if you're gonna go that route. And obviously you're gonna need a fan, but you also gotta buy a hard drive. Yeah, you could use an SD card, but the main reason you'd want to mode over the GDEMU right at this point is the hard drive. So, and then another SSD, one terabyte should be enough for the entire library if you're doing one game, get one game per region. Um, that's literally like, I think it's like 70, 80 bucks now for an SSD. So you're looking at about 300 bucks, over 300 bucks just for to replace the disk drive to put your games on here. Meanwhile, you got the GDMU that's, yes, it's a clone, but it's fully working. You have, you can get a 128 gig micro SD or whatever that is for literally dirt cheap. Like even if you get a 256, that's about like 20 bucks now, if you know where to go. So for literally a hundred bucks, you could be up and running and you don't have to go all out, change the shell like I did. I wanted to because this is the Dreamcast I've always wanted. But if you just want to get your Dreamcast up and running and future-proof it, all you literally need is maybe 40 bucks for the power supply, another 100 for the GDEMU with the SD card, you're good to go. So it's worth putting that investment in. And that's part of the reason why I do these videos. To show you not only the cool systems I'm building for myself, but to show you what's possible. Because a lot of you are going to dig and find your old systems or you got the hankering to play your old childhood favorites. And I'm showing you that you can make it so much better. That's the whole point of these things. To show you what you can do. So now, Claire is completed. 
we have another system that's completely done. And now I'm going to sit back and play some games on here. And what's next? I have no clue. I got a lot planned, but I have no clue exactly which direction I'm going to go. So the next thing I do is going to be just as much a surprise as you. So until then, until we meet next time, Rachel Schaefer signing off.